Thank you very much. So muddy, muffled, muddy, muddled or muffled, understanding the perception of audio quality and music by hearing aid users. This is a, a paper that we've just recently presented at an international conference and, and one that I'm going to be presenting later on this week at the uh, Basic Auditory Science Conference down in uh, London. And it gives an overview of the project, the Cadenza project so far. So I'm going to describe a bit about this first study and then we'll talk about the listener panel study. So where's it all started? Well, actually some work that I've been doing over the last few years has shown that hearing aids are predominantly, uh, have been predominantly designed for speech and there's been less focus on music perception with hearing aids. Mm -hmm. We know that hearing aids are helpful for music listening, but there are still numerous issues that persist. Um, this can be issues with source separation, with excessive loudness, uh, distortion, um, and just generally poor sound quality. So because of this previous work, which has shown that whilst hearing aids are helpful, actually they do need improving, we developed a project, the Cadenza project, um, that is looking to improve the audio quality of music for listeners with hearing loss who wear hearing aids. So that was the start of the project, the Cadenza project. We 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 spent quite a, quite a few, uh, about a year and a half developing it, uh, and it was funded and it started in uh, 2022, last year. And there's two parts to the project overall. So we're running machine learning challenges to improve the processing of music on hearing aids and consumer devices. And we're doing perceptual testing to develop better methods for evaluating audio quality for people with hearing loss. And it's that part of the project that I'm working on at Leeds uh, with Scott, and I'm going to be describing today. So what we wanted to do because of the known problems um, with uh, for hearing aid users with sound quality is we wanted to improve our understanding of the perceptual dimensions of music audio quality for hearing aid users. We want to develop audio quality metrics that we can then use in future research. And we're doing this through, well, we did this through our sensory panel work. Now, what we wanted to do was we wanted to capture the various different dimensions of, of music audio quality. And we wanted to do this in a way that was inductive and listener driven. So um, we're very much um, basing it in the experiences of those um, with hearing loss rather than what we think might be of relevance in the literature, the existing literature, which tends to have to have been carried out with normally hearing participants. Um, so the, the process was to really understand um, what these key perceptual dimensions were in order to develop some scales that can be um, can be used in future research. Now, Whoa. there is there is, uh, you know, th there's there is a lot of research on audio quality perception already um, using varied methods um, across different uh, modes of sound reproduction, but there's less focus on hearing loss and where people with hearing loss are used in the studies, the descriptive terms tend to be derived from studies using normally hearing listeners. So this may not entirely capture the lived experience for people with hearing loss. And I, I put an example of um, up here of the sound wheel lexicon um, by Pedersen and Zakharov. This was derived from existing work on audio quality and just um, gives you a flavor of the sort of perceptual attributes and uh, attribute groupings that have been found in previous research on audio quality. But we want to know how relevant these are to people with hearing loss. And so the focus of our study has been to, um, to take an, in, an inductive uh, approach and, and really base our understanding in the lived experience of those with hearing loss. So in our sensory panel study, we went through uh, a number of different uh, stages. We used a descriptive analytic 
technique and um, went through a number of phases. The first one was uh, individual elicitation, where we asked the sensory panel to uh, listen to various music samples and to provide uh, up to three single word terms to dis describe the audio quality. And then we went through a series of focus groups. These were day long focus groups, so a lot of commitment from our sensory panel participants. And what we wanted to do was we wanted to understand these perceptual attributes. We needed to sort of reduce the number of attributes we had overall and see whether they grouped in particular ways um, uh, and to to understand what those dimensions might be and to develop perceptual scales. And we did this over the course of um, three, uh, three focus groups. Most participants, we had 12 participants in total, and most um, were, had a hearing loss uh, in the range from um, uh, mild to moderate, but with, the, with, with some with slightly more uh, severe hearing loss. We chose music samples from the Medley DB database, um, which spanned classical rock, pop, jazz, uh, and opera. And we applied various processing strategies to these. So compression, bandpass filter, car noise, and remixing. And the reason that we did this is because we wanted to um, maximize diversity in the perceptual space. So, we had 27 samples in total for the individual elicitation, and these were listened to by the sensory panel participants twice, once aided and once unaided. So that was the sort of overall method. Um, and here's some of the results. Um, so the individual elicitation phase. Uh, resulted in 1,438 raw terms. So that's what I mean by that is words that we use to characterize the audio quality um, uh, uh, overall. And, and 373 of those were, were unique terms. This table on, on the slide shows the 20 most used terms. And you can see that, that clear was by far uh, the, the most frequently uh, used term to describe the audio quality, um, but other frequently used terms were loud, distorted, unclear, and indistinct, for example. Now, we needed some way to reduce the attribute space. And so the focus, the, the, the first focus group, what we did was we started with terms that we used four or more times in the individual elicitation phase. And we played some more musical samples to the sensory panel participants, and we asked them to pick a single term that best described their experience of, uh, of the sample. So in this way, we were asking for a single attribute that best described that particular musical sample to, to reduce the space down. And then later in that first focus, focus group, we, we we sort of got together a, a rough um, a spatial grouping of this smaller term space. So you can see here um, uh, us working working out these potential groupings uh, of attributes on, on the board. So you can see on um, the left hand side there, um, the participants felt that sort of muddy and muddled, blurred, indistinct and muffled and so on could be grouped together um, conceptually. But actually, it was really interesting because the, the group felt that there were some 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 differences um, um, between these single words. So it was a sort of, a, it was a bit of a, um, uh, a balancing act as to, to, to which words fit with others. So um, uh, an example of, um, uh, just to give you an example, sort of um, muddy as, 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 as being sort of um, conveying a, a sort of a, a, a lack of transparency or almost if there's a veil or a, a cloudiness to, 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 to the music. 
Um, whereas modelled, um, the participants felt was more about um, the 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 ordering of the instruments and how they and how they sound together. So there were these sort of subtle differences in the specific attributes. And what we were trying to do was we were trying to get to some broader level groupings and the meaning of those groupings so that we could take some um, broader dimensions through. At this stage, it's worth noting also that we. Um, we actually uh, participants dropped various terms um, with within the the attribute space. So let me give you some examples like percussive, jazzy, and rhythmic. And these were dropped because it was felt that they were describing the musical quality rather than specifically the audio quality. Okay. So we went through this process of of um, sort of deciding which attributes were important and which weren't and which should be dropped uh, within the process. The second focus group, we then worked through these preliminary terms. Um, we used to, to sort of scaffold this session. We analysed the first focus group discussions and the spatial mapping uh, on the board. Um, and we digitized this and we, we gave it back to the participants and proposed various groupings. And that was to, um, to initiate the, the conversations about whether these were groupings that they wanted to take forward. So in the second focus group, we, we started to talk around these groupings to see which um, they felt were most salient in their experience to try and get to um, establish some, some final term groupings. And these were the um, uh, these these were the final groupings. Um, we arrived at seven perceptual groupings um, that, and, and then discussed these these further. Um, wide and narrow and compressed um, were actually dropped by participants because um, they felt that these were were too broadly applied so you know sort of wide dynamic range or wide frequency range it wasn't it wasn't clear um uh, always what that might be referring to and then um eventually the 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 grouping that you can see on the left hand side there um which which is, is sort of you know describing the, the 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 ability to sort of distinguish out the music um and um to, to hear out the elements of the music was actually collapsed down with um the second one you can see here which is characterized by a sort of lack of clarity indistinct unclear um uh, muddy and so on so that was actually um made into to, to, to one grouping because it was felt that they uh, represented different ends of the same the, the same spectrum which the group called um, clarity. One that was slightly uh, trickier and involved uh, the least amount of consensus um, it was difficult for some participants was spaciousness so you can see there on the board that we were discussing the attributes of spacious or resonant or echoey the group felt that it was important um, but perhaps more in relation to musical performance than music listening but we did take it forward um, nonetheless there were some further discussion of which attributes should be included and which shouldn't. So I'll take an example in the, the, the top right hand corner uh, of, of the word sharp that could actually be applied to, um, to, to intonation in music. So it was decided that that wasn't a good word um, to, um, uh, to signify this group as a whole. And so uh, the group chose harshness to describe um, this sort of um, piercing um, and, and shrill uh, experience of music. So what we ended up with is um, uh, at the end of focus group three is a series of perceptual attributes and their definitions that were um, in an inductive approach determined by the sensory panel participants. These were, I won't read all of the definitions off, um, but just to say these were clarity, harshness, distortion, spaciousness, and then um, uh, three relating to frequency balance, so treble, middle and bass. And there was some discussion in the group about whether this um, uh, could or should be one separate uh, uh, separate 
rating scale or whether it needed to be all three rating scales. Um, and there was some difference of opinion there. Um, in addition to those, we also um, uh, we also asked about um, uh, a kind of overarching audio quality. We got the group to decide on um, a definition for um, uh, audio perceived audio quality overall. Um, so that's that's what we um, ended up with at the end of the sensory panel uh, study, and uh, we have those in a in rating scales um from sort of zero to a hundred um and uh the, the the group were were happy with um uh those as um uh kind of rating scales to take forward and here i'll just show you some of our um workings out on the board um for how we were um sort of coming coming at these rating scales you might notice in the bottom right hand corner there um this we were sort of working out whether frequency balance should be one one item with 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 basie on the, the left and trebly on the right or whether it should be three items and so so a real kind of discussion of um uh what the best way uh to to rate these perceptual attributes are so just to just to conclude um uh the the sensory panel study what what we did was we wanted to you know understand what uh, is important is perceptually important from from the perspective of those with hearing loss and to develop scales to um, measure the audio quality perception uh, of music we want to know how well um, these generalize across different listeners and contexts so this represents the consensus of a specific group of 12 participants but how useful are these when we scale that up um, and we have more listeners using them um, so this is a, a a question for us going forward and the next step of the research is to uh, use the attribute scales to evaluate music samples um, and this is where the listener panel the the listener panel study comes in so you'll remember at the start, I said that there are two strands to the Cadenza project. This is the understanding of perceptual experience of people with hearing loss with respect to music. The other strand is um, uh, the challenges, um, the running of machine learning challenges to develop novel signal processing strategies for use in hearing devices. So that may be hearing aids, but also consumer devices as well. And so at the same time that Scott and I have been running this research study uh, at Leeds, at Salford and Sheffield, it's a multi-institutional um, project, um, there's been a, a, a challenge running alongside wherein entrants are given a baseline system and then they have to adapt the musical samples with the, um, with the goal of improving the audio quality. Now, we're at the point in the process where these two things come together. So entrants have submitted um, samples that have been processed with a view to improving their audio quality. And we now have a set of audio quality rating scales. And so the purpose of the listener panel study is to rate the challenge entrants musical samples to see whether they've improved them for audio quality or not and that's that's where um that's where this study comes in so we're using the scales that have been developed by the sensory panel participants uh in the the, the listener panel study now there's a slight change in that the um uh we did some piloting and as a result of the piloting, we've actually reduced the number of attributes um, within, within the study overall. So this is what the study looks like for you as participants. It will be around five hours of listening, and this will be rating around 200 musical samples. Um, and that's 25 musical samples that are uh, have been processed by eight different systems. They're the systems to try and improve uh, the sound quality. 
So um, you'll be using the, the, the note interface. So it's an online interface and you'll be sent an individual link. Um, you'll use your participant number to enter um, into, into the interface. You will then have instructions and, and definitions, a volume control Bye. testing, and some practice trials before you go into um, the, the actual main ratings, audio quality ratings. Um, and that's going to then form um, the basis of um, uh, our data, our listening data, to understand whether those systems um, have, have improved the audio quality. So that's an overview of the Lister panel. I don't know whether, Scott, there's anything that I've I've missed here that you might want to um, uh, come on and, and say a few words about, and then we'll give a, 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 a chance for Q&A. Thank you. Alinka, I think we've covered most of the information there, and it may well be um, that for everybody who's involved in this study, um, your your questions may well pick up on something that might not necessarily be clear uh, in in the preparations here as to as to what you might expect. Um, I think the main thing I would like to mention with this listener panel study is that the task really. I wouldn't be worried at all um, about whether you are providing the right or wrong answer. There is no such thing as a correct or incorrect response to anything that you listen to in this listener panel study. It's, it's entirely about your subjective experience and the description through these rating scales of what it is that you hear in terms of the audio quality. So you will, you will see that we have a scale or a question about preference or how much you liked each piece of music that you hear. But although we are collecting data on that because we're interested in seeing how it relates to audio quality, the focus is very much on your description through these scales of what it is you hear. And I think that's the main thing to add at this point. That's great, thanks Scott. 